Here we've got what looks like a commoner garden sash cord. You get your commoner garden sash cord, and that's what it looks like. The bottom is usually a little bit hollow. They used them on galleons and ships, and what they would do is they would fill that with wax. Cord tied onto it to the side here, with the man holding the cord, and the cord was knotted off in fathoms, which is six feet. And he would stand on the side of the boat, he would sway it like that. Well, he got a nice swing on it, he'd throw it forward, because the boat is going that way. He'd go racing to the seabed, shooting through his fingers, hit the ground, he'd pull it back up again, or hit the seabed, pull it back up again. And if the wax was intact, like it in the carpet, he wouldn't say carpet, he'd say rock. Why? Because there's nothing in the wax. If it hit sand, it would have grains of sands in it. So what the guy who swung the lead would turn around and say is, ten fathoms and sand, which would be repeated down the other side there, and they'd watch it till he got ten, nine, eight, oh, we've got to be very careful, but if it was hitting the ground like that and coming back with nothing, then it's rock. We've got to be very careful, the rocks don't come up, we don't want to sink the ship, we don't have sounders. But this guy swung the lead on the side of the boat. And when people turn around and say, has he been swinging the lead? Well, that's what he was referred to there. Because the guy who stood on the side of the galleon doing this, swinging the lead, had the easiest job on board. He wasn't running up and down the rigging, he wasn't pulling on ropes, he wasn't scrubbing decks, he wasn't doing all the other things. He stood on the side of the boat, favoured of the master of the boat, and he's swinging the lead. That's where that particular phrase came from, strangely enough. And now we come to two little pieces, what put these boats together. They're all made of oak back in those days, bless them. That's why we got rid of all the oak forest, we chopped them all down. But you had the deck planks that were scrubbed to death. That's a deck planking pin. What would happen is when the decks were laid and you've got nice big broad pieces of deck like that, one would go on that side, one would go on that side, and you'd follow the plank like you were floorboarding the room and you'd bang them down. You can see how this one's bent over like that, but you can also see how it's been hacked and notched, which is still very sharp now. And what it's to do is bang it all the way in so when it's gone down and just before it finishes going in there, a little piece of hemp is put round there. Bang down, and that's the top of the, that goes in the deck there, and that seals it. And these little notches are there to stop it coming out. Now then, that's just the decking planks. So the decking planks were banged into great big beams. And the great big beams were all together. This is a smallish one. This is a smallish one. And what would happen is there'd be a, a hole burned through one of the beams, the hole and another beam together or even in the side of the boat, and that would be, washer would be put on it, because it would be nice and plain, you'd put a washer on like that, put it through the hole that was in the one, a guy would be the other side with a lump of metal holding it like that, the guy would be on this side, and that would be there, and they'd be putting hemp around that, and he would whack it with the big hammer, and whack it down, and whack it down until, I've got it stuck, until it went all the way down, looking like that and it was smacked in the beams and the planks would be put on the top of it so that would be holding the beam and as the plank went the other way on it those would be going through and they are bronze beautiful very expensive if you well people don't come across them now well they do occasionally but down through the years i've come across wrecks where they're lying on the seabed these are sitting in rows like that, row on row on row, the wood is dissipated and gone, but when you move the silt, you will come across some of the other beams, so that's it. Pin for that, and then throw it in. We shoot back in the past again and leap all the way down. That particular amphora, like the shape of it and everything, is the Phoenician, a couple of thousand years old. And what they kept in that was wine. All they would do is come all the way down here to Spain where they were growing wine or anywhere in Italy they moved it around. This was brought up in Morocco. So 
once assuming the wine came from Spain, he didn't come from Morocco, that I do know, it came from Spain, but the vessel that came down here got it, but it must have left in bad weather. Uh, the port that's over on the northern side of uh, the Bay of Gibraltar has uh, been there for 2,000 years. Phoenicians started it, the Romans took it over, and everybody else and his dog after that took over that, and he just laid it over. But the Phoenicians brought that all the way down here, loaded it up with wine, left the port, must have got caught in a very bad storm, got swept across the Straits itself to a place called Pontelion. If you look it up on any chart or map, it's marked there by the side of a little island called Peril. Uh, Pontelion was the point of the line hit it and sank in 40 meters of water. About 40 years ago we were diving out there and we went down to 40 meters and we were having a look around and something went wrong with a piece of equipment. We went back up, sorted everything out, we came back down and when we were sitting on the seabed saying get everything okay to one another, we suddenly looked around us and there they were in row upon row upon row. We found this amphora wreck and that particular fragment of an amphora, we picked up and brought back. The wreck is still out there, people have been looking at it since they've taken photographs on it. You don't loot it, you just leave them down there. They're better off staying where they were. They've been there a couple of thousand years, why bring them back and lose them completely? But this broken one we brought back, and it's a beautiful piece on it. And in fact, if you get your little handheld camera, and you come up here and I take that down, and you look straight down the middle of it, you'll see what's left of some of the soft coral growth that's still on the inside of it and growing on the side. Yeah? It's a wonderful piece of stuff and I, I'm quite amored by it. I quite like it. It's a lovely piece. But there's only a few little fragments of stuff that I've actually got in here. This is all the stuff that one comes across. Uh, you come across Neolithic stuff when you're travelling and what have you. In fact, one of the pieces that I've picked up Tunisia. While we were in Tunisia, what's that? Very old, tens of thousands of years old. Spear. And when we were over there, the people over there found it when we went down there looking. We found it. Well, I found it, handed it over to the guy from the museum there, and he said, I don't worry about it yet, take it with you. And he would just say, What laws I broke when I did that? I no idea and I'm not going back to Tunisia to tell them about it, okay? And you get strange things that you come back with where they use lovely pieces, little hand hacks. See how they've chipped it and caught it so you hold it like that so you can and it's very, very sharp. So you can cut a thing, cut a thing. They had a lot of patience in those days too.